now we're rigging up this salmon rope for these turkeys. So right here is the leader that we're using. There we go, there we go. Oh yeah, this is the keeper, baby. Oh, oh, no, I'm oh. in here, I'm in this line. Hey, uh, oh, where's it going, Chief? Okay, well, don't stop it. What's up guys, Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and today we're out here fishing for white sturgeon. We're out here with my buddy Joe, John, and Vince Borges. Now Joe and John, these guys are captains of this boat. You can come out here and book them. I'm gonna put the information down here. What's the name of your business? Legal Limit Sport Fishing. Legal Limit Sport Fishing. I'll put all that info down here. You guys can check it out. We're using Phoenix rods today. We're gonna put the herd on these sturgeon. And we got Joey Jr. right up there behind the camera. What's going on guys? <laughs> now. Joey's vicious, so we're keeping him on the rods. He's not gonna miss a lick. Us old guys, you know, we're a little bit behind on our step, but not this guy. Future, we got him on it. No, but we're gonna break it all down for you, show you the rigging, show you the line, reels, rods, uh, break down the methods, the tides. We're gonna get on them, show you the, all the different baits. Hopefully put some big fish on film for you guys, so stay with us, and we're gonna get on some action. Let's keep it. What this is all about is so we can get the, the rods close together so we can see all the tips all at one time. Um, the way we do it here on our boat is we like to keep them here in these quick draw rod holders. <clears throat> what it does is it allows you to not have the rod on a balance beam like majority of the sturgeon fishermen do. It just stays in place so the rods ain't moving around like this and it's kind of hard to detect the bite. So we, you know, purchase these things. Uh, actually changed up, changed it up a bit we actually added a stainless steel tube to it so that it fit our handles um, so it's a lot comfortable for the people we bring out fishing um, we like to keep the rods as close together you know so when you're stepping back watching it it's all in front of you and it's not spread out like you know a lot of other fishing boats out there Come on, no. Again? So He's right not. off the bat, oh we started getting strikes, but we just couldn't hook up. I want you to look closely at my rod tip. That's how subtle those sturgeon can strike. And nothing. May you put it back in? Oh. Sorry, Dad. Sorry, dude. Nothing. It looked like we had him for a second. So on our first spot, we got a few nice strikes, but really couldn't hook up. And then the fish started disappearing on the graph. So we're going to search out some better water, try to get over the top of some better arches, and. Uh, put back down on them. It's good if you're in one area and you're soaking too long. Get up, move over, get those baits back down, get fresh bait, fresh bait back down, get your morale going again, and get on some fish. All right, so now I'm gonna have Joey Jr. show you guys how we're rigging up this salmon roe for these sturgeon today. Why don't you go ahead and break this down for us, Joey? All right, guys, well, we got some fresh king roe from Sacramento River. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put it on a TK-14 trocar Kaylee style hook. We're gonna get your silly shred, magic string, or whatever you'd like to call it. I'm gonna slide it up the hook a bit. Get your point out. Wrap it up. It's more. To, it's best to have more than less. I'm gonna wrap it up like that. More better. A little bit bigger than a golf ball or the size of a golf ball should work. But the hook sticked out like that, so when that fish grabs it, he just sucks it right up. Yep. Use more thread than little thread. Better, the more thread you got on there, the better odds is it's gonna stay on there. You're gonna pound them, let them pound it for a little bit longer. You get time over there to set that hook. Now, uh, the nice part about these Kaylee style hooks like this is they get a deeper bite on the fish and that's actually imperative for sturgeon fishing. They got that big sucker down there. You need that hook to get back in there and grip good. We're gonna break down the rig that Joe set up for these and uh, just show you guys it's a different style. We gotta use single barbless hooks nowadays out here. You know, we're out here on the California Delta, so we're going to break that down shortly here and hopefully get some fish on film and show you guys exactly how to do it yourself. Oh, man, I just, I know I believe Looks like right we're marking there. some good fish here. Oh, These ones right here on the bottom are the feeders. So we got yeah, one, two, eight. three, four, we got five, six. So we're actually marking some good fish here in this deep hole. Hopefully these fish will blow out of this hole and come right into where our baits are. Here comes another one. Uh, hopefully that's his head hanging towards the bottom. But as you can see, he's got the arch here. We've got another one right there on the bottom. 
So Joe, I know we're using all Phoenix rods out here today. What is it about this rod in particular that just suits your sturgeon fishing needs? Uh, you know what, it's not just the look of this rod, but it's the feel of this rod. It, um, it actually has a beautiful tip to it. Right now, this is the 807 Abyss. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's a great rod. It's We've used a bunch of different rods in the past and we've had problems with the eyes breaking mm -hmm. or busting off. As you can tell, these eyes are wrapped really nice. Oh yeah. You know, and, <clears throat> and the way this rod is made, you know, being a 70-30, um, it's actually really good for sturgeon. It's got an ex excellent tip on it. Um, That's a composite rod, right? Yeah, it's, it's composite and, you know, 30% glass. Yeah. So I know a lot of people in the past were not really aware that you were fishing glass rods for sturgeon because mm -hmm. you need a good rod that's going to load up and not just bang, an instant connection. We use braid nowadays. It's 65, right? That yeah, you're using 65 on here? pound. 65 pound braid. So what that means is you got a direct connection to that fish, to that heavy leader. And if you don't have a moderate or a moderate fast action rod, and these are moderate fast, something that's going to build into that rod. And composite is just a glass graphite mix that loads up really good. It's a lot better and it's a little bit faster than those original old glass rods, but it's just enough to get a good load on that fish with the hook set without slamming your terminal just bam instead it's that instant surge which prevents all that gear from bending out hooks bending out swivels breaking you name it so that composite blend is just the perfect thing nowadays when you're fishing for sturgeon yeah you know what it has a great backbone all under here you know and it still has a sensitivity for a sturgeon fisherman uh -huh. to detect the bite now what's the length of this one here this one's an eight foot it's an eight footer you know yeah I know a lot of guys were going too long in the past too they get that really long rod, they get it too close to the boat, and they can't get out there for that That's fish. Correct. And you know, we can't snare these fish anymore. We gotta net them. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we gotta net them, we gotta measure them next to the side of the boat. So you yeah. gotta be a little bit closer. And that eight foot is about the perfect length. You get a lot of pickup. When you see Joe reach over and swings this home, you're moving a lot of line. You're moving that hook. If we cast out there at long range and you got a short rod, you're not moving it much and you need to bury these hooks with sturgeon. So that eight foot's a killer length. That's an awesome setup, man. Plus it's got these pretty little purple wraps on there. <laughs> yeah. You know, the what, what people like about the Abyss series of rods mm -hmm. is the price point. Price point falls in at about the 179 to $200 price point range. Mm -hmm. uh, they come eight, nine, 10 foot models, but uh, the most popular on the sturgeon is the 807, 808. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times what we like to classify the difference of which model you use depends on the current, how much weight you have to get out cast. If you're out here casting a 12 ounce weight, uh, you want to go with the, something like the 808. Oh, 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 oh. We're getting bent right here. here. <laughs> yeah. That was quick. It's coming in. Captain but if uh, if you're you know if you don't have a lot of current mm -hmm. or you're fishing shallower where you have a little less current, if the fish are feeding shallow and you're going with an eight ounce weight or even you know six ounce or something mm -hmm. maybe, you can drop down to the 807. And it's not so much uh, that the rod can't handle the weight; mm -hmm. it's in the casting ability of your of the rod. Right. Uh, the way it loads. So the lighter way. weight, the 807, the heavier weight, the 808 is the what you're saying? The 808, correct. Oh, yeah. okay. That's yeah. cool. And uh, all the rods, all Phoenix rods, uh, feature a lifetime warranty. So if anything happens to the rod, it, it does have a no questions asked warranty. $60, you send it in, you get a new rod coming back. So you're saying if Joe got ticked at Joey and broke it over Joey, this is still within the warranty? It's still within the warranty. Oh, no, it doesn't cover Joey's oh, medical. He's all it covers right is the rod. Okay, yeah. so but, Joey's uh, medical is not covered. Rod is covered. Rod is covered. So yeah. even if you want to hunt deer with this thing, it's got a nice little oh, spot yeah. where you can mount a scope. You bet. You bet. You can mount a scope on it upside down. That's like this. If you really want to go with a whip cast if you're going for deer, top water is usually the best. The back, the back of the deer. If you're going for deer, I recommend a 20 ounce weight. That way you could wrap the neck in. What are you thinking? Like a three treble super spook? Or yeah, actually, like probably that. the rope has yeah, been pretty you know, good lately for I like. Deer. I like the troll car treble with the one ounce you know, yeah. river to sea. It's pretty good. This just lead into them. You got to load up to them. Don't, don't, when you first get them, don't just, you know, snap, just lead into them. Yeah, you, got, you have to. When you're, when you're snagging, if you set too quick, it doesn't give that point enough time to start yeah. working. If you're not snagging, you're not bragging. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's it. That's a fact. And that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Going over, over. He's going over. This Come this way. Come so this Joey way. Jr. was the first one to hook up with the sturgeon that morning. He set the hook hard while keeping his rod tip upright and burning his reel as fast as he could to load up that rod into the fish. It's absolutely crucial to never give these fish slack since the state law says we have to use barbless hooks now and single hooks, so keeping the load on that fish is imperative. They can easily come off if the load comes off of that rod. Finally hooked up. Just... 
It's like the first sturgeon hookup of the day. It's a shaker. It's a undersized sturgeon. It's referred to as a shaker, just like the stripers. But still, it's a nice little white dinosaur. Not bad. Looks like it was, you know, a bit on row. There we go. Look at how white that guy is. Yep. Didn't even penetrate all the way through. And he did get a good hook set yep, on right him. Right in there. These are troll car hooks. These are about as sharp as you can possibly get. And Joey buried that hook. And you can see that hook point just barely coming through there. And these, these guys have extremely tough mouths. So you really got to jam that hook set home. Don't gallivant around with the thing. Just bury it. See how easy that came out? Yeah. Gotta, lo gotta love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, go. little buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh! Dude, your rock got dumped. Were oh, you holding oh, it? Oh, yeah. oh. What happened to stopping off that spot? No, we're going to Angel. Oh, okay. So what we're looking for right now is some deeper water that's holding fish. We have a smaller tide, so with the smaller tide, we need to find some deeper water because the water on the on the deeper tide moves a little quicker, so we'd get some more action with the bait down there. So we found ourselves a 61 foot hole, and it's holding quite a, uh, quite a few fish, actually. Um, you can see there's some fish inside here. We got some fish that are suspended that are just traveling through. but. What you want to do is, if your tide's ripping, you want to go a little bit shallower so your so your weights are able to hold. Um, and if the the tide isn't going pretty fast like it is today, we got like a two foot tide. So we're you know you got to go deep for your baits to work. So this is what we just did right now. As you can see, this line coming down right here. This is our anchor, and this is the way we normally catch our fish. <laughs> right there on his head. You got him. You got him. Is he there? Yeah. So after yeah, grabbing those fish, we moved slightly back up river just a hair from them and dropped down our bait so we can get there in time before they passed us. And just like that, I hooked this little shit. If it ain't that big, let's fix these lines. Yeah, We're tangled on that coming one. on this one. Here, make sure you do your it. finger. Come over here. Huh? Here you go. Oh, little shaker. Oh, wow. A little shaker. Oh, wow, dude, that's the smallest one. <laughs> Almost big fish of the day, but, you know, Joe just edged me out a little bit. There we go. A little white surge in there. Right Not bad. Here. At least we're getting some bites now. Yeah, Hopefully we'll be able to put a big one in the boat right and show you guys. Right here, but this I'll is our target fish right here. Beautiful fish. Okay. Uh, Joe, yeah. you want to slip under here? Duck under? Duck under? Come on, Nick. You get this. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, you get this. I appreciate it. Now, I got past the rod here. I just want to clarify. I'm no poacher, but it's been years since I've been out surgeon fishing. I always did it as a kid. You know, I got some big greens and good whites, but we never documented it before. You know, the, the show became a hobby later in life. This one might be close. Oh yeah. Dude, I love the way this rod just loads up, man. Yeah, did you, did you check that drag, Joe? Woo! Yeah. Okay. yeah, we're good. Coming around, coming around. Coming around. When it comes to bait selection, oftentimes you're going to hear the usual, like grass shrimp, ghost shrimp, lamprey eel, but oftentimes sturgeon are in those areas where salmon are spawning or herring spawning, so roe becomes the bait of choice. Um, the real key is with picking your sturgeon bait is to have fresh, lively bait. Um, if you don't have that option, you can get the frozen baits. Um, you can add some bait scent to them, you know, and still get the job done. Uh, before handling the baits, try washing your hands with products like the Fisherman's Soap to help prevent those, you know, human oils from getting onto your bait because the sturgeon will detect it. Trust me on that. There we go. A little bit better fish. Let me get some, let me get some slack out for you. There we go. There we go. Nice. Look at the rods. Make sure nothing's loaded up over here. Watch it. <laughs> See guys, this one bit on uh, some ghost. See them? You know? yep. These troll car hooks are sharp, dude. They penetrate very well. You know, we do use smaller hooks. Um, it seems like the smaller ones, for the way these fish are biting right now, are doing excellent for us. So we got this guy right here. He's not actually a keeper, but they're still fun to fight. Still a pretty fish. Yeah, still a pretty fish. Check them out, dude. <laughs> oh, Dirk! <laughs> on the line. Hang on. Get it under. How is it? It's a good fish. Feels dude. pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I turned this on so I can monitor. Okay. Cool. Monitor. I just didn't want it to open. No. 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 
Right on! Oh, little Good drag, on. Little drag slip. We need to get a little okay, wait, bit more. Wait, 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 check this one. We need to get into it a little bit more. Because he is not in it. Oh, get a little light on it. You got it? I He's not stay, in that I one. I want to stay loaded in this fish. Is that a fish? There we go. Double hookup. Double. Yeah, doubles. No, I might be in that one. Whoa. No, no, you're not. Yes. No, I'm in your, I'm in his line. Hey, uh, oh, where yeah. are you going, yeah. Chief? Okay, well, don't, don't cut it. Don't cut it. No, no, no. I he's, know, he's I got full. it. Oh. Came off. No, it didn't. Came off. Oh, yeah. No, he didn't. Yeah. No, he didn't. No, I caught up to him. Yeah, he, he's good. Make sure he's you do good. your finger too, dude. If it gets clocked up on one I'm side. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm watching. Okay. Uh, oh, that's good, dude, that's, hey, a, that's hey, a tank. Hey, come give me a hand real quick. Uh, yeah, just hold this. No keep oh, your I thumb. Know, just keep your thumb on it. And let line out when his fish runs, because this one's on it. Yep. There's a better fish. Now we're talking. What are you up to? <laughs> Just hanging? That's cool. Phoenix Rods, best leaning post in the business. That's right, Abyss 808. Look at that. They can just hold up all 240 of me. You're holding up 240 of you and uh, 240 of fish. Uh, could be. The reason why I put the clicker on is because I can't tell yeah. if it's running. No, and no, as no. us trying to control the boat, I'm just right. letting the people watching uh, this know that. A lot of people call it Hollywood in, but yeah. I just like to know how far you're running out and stuff in case we got to pull anchor or whatnot. If you take a look at this rod right here, take a look at this rod. I know it might be a little bit silhouetted for you with the sun right there, but this is a moderate fast. And that means just bending just up from the middle. And this is what we were talking about. There you go. We have barbless hooks on, so it's absolutely imperative to keep the load in this rod at all times. Because if we don't, there's a weight working down against this fish that's gonna turn that hook. If that weight falls down on slack line, or if he runs towards me, it could potentially start working that hook out because there's no barb to hang on to it. So I'm trying to keep this rod into its action point right here. Once I'm here, I don't reel. If I start gaining, I reel up that line that I'm gaining and try to maintain the load in this rod. I'll reel into it, get back into that action, and let the rod fight the fish for me. I think this one may be an over. We'll see. It might be. It's just a little shaker in the tail. <laughs> a little shaker in the tail? <laughs> shaker in the tail. That number I put down in the front of the video, guys, about coming out here and catching some big sturgeon, do yourself a favor and call it and have a good time like I am. The only thing I'm really trying to avoid today is a sunburn. Everything else is working great. And the grill's about to be fired back up shortly. Gotta fire that grill back up. You guys give me yeah, a some burger burgers ready while we fight this one. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what would you like, Nick? You want, you, would you like a water or a soda or some chips? We like some apple. Uh, you look like you might be a while. Moonshine, right? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh well, <laughs> wait a minute. I forgot. I'm to blame. You made it. You made it. Come on, go. Come on, come on. Gaining some ground on him now. I thought just, we had a double keep coming. It looked like his was yeah. that way, and you were that it way. It was just wrapped one time. Yeah. Gaining some ground on him. Move this chair's meal, move everything that way. How's it feeling there, Nick? Make sure you do your thumb. Go ahead and check yeah. that line on there. We're, we're okay. Yeah, because it's pretty full spool. What I'm gonna need you to do is once this uh, this fish comes up, um, just keep cool and slide yourself backwards towards the front when it, when it comes yeah, up. Yeah. What I gained is now leaving. <laughs> that fish hasn't come up. Okay, right this fish is coming up right here. We're gonna find out what this is, or how big it is, I should say. Is that wheezing I hear, son? <laughs> All right, this is keeper right here. Give me that net. No, 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 no keep no, that up straight, bro. I can't, I went on the wrong side. Okay, Nick. Do me a favor and walk yep, yep, forward. Yep, yep. I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. Keep going, keep going. Yep. Keep going, he's in the net. 
Yeah! Yeah, baby! Woo! He's in the net. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. All right, this is how we do yeah, it, folks. Yeah, we get a measure on that thing. Yeah, Hold no, up, he's team that, working good times, baby. He's not a long one. He's good. That's not long, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's that ghost shrimp action there. Yeah, that's a ghost shrimp. Real. Now, I'm going to tell you what that is. That's mm. legal limit sport fishing, baby. Legal limit sport fishing, guys. Yeah, buddy, right, right there. It's a two-man deal. Two-man deal. Fatty McGee. This yeah. one's going in the box, folks. Are you still shaking? I yeah. always shake, Chief. Somebody open. But what we need to do now is we need to get your uh, sturgeon tag yep. and uh, fill it out. By law, we got to get that done right away. Get your tags, fill it out, guys. Let them know what's going on out here. That's right. Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to boat country in Escalon? With one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from Weldcraft, Low and Hughescraft, chances are they've got the right fishing boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your boating, repair and maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. I'll see you there. Did you know that P-Line makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs from the super strong abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch super stealthy CX Premium or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with P-Line's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, P-Line's got it covered. To find out more, visit P-Line.com. P-Line, baby! Are you ready for a pair of polarized sunglasses that's going to improve on your fishing game? Well, Bluefin Eyewears address all the current issues with fishing glasses. No more pressure discomfort behind the ears, they're super lightweight with improved face gripping technology and not to mention a lifetime warranty bluefineyewear.com guys check it out ever try pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank if not you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today with yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat you can't help but catch more fish find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www.RustyLures.com. Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.rcfishingworld.com today. Did you know that Bass Angler Magazine has more articles than any other bass fishing publication? And with the top pros from around the nation spilling the beans in every issue, there's really no reason for you not to be subscribed to the most informative bass fishing magazine there is, Bass Angler Magazine. Thanks for watching, guys. Now let's get back to the show. So right here is the leader that we're using. What? How heavy of uh, mono? That's 80 pound test mono. That's the P-Line original leader? Yeah, this is the P-Line original uh, line. Now what's going on here with the single hook and this quarter ounce bullet weight with that bead, you can see that it's a snell and it's going back through here. The benefit of this setup is if this fish chomps down and this weight gets into his mouth and you go to yank it out, the snail kicks out when you apply pressure right there. See that? It just started digging into my hand. And that'll grab that fish real deep and it'll get a good bite on the fish. So this is a killer system that Joe's got going. <laughs> okay guys, what we're going to do here is show you how to fill out this report card. So when you're by yourself, you could um, fill it out. So what you want to do is, you can see there's three sections right here. So that's your three fish. Take and just cut along this dotted line. And what you're going to do here is put the month, the date, and the location on this report card here. The locations are right here. So since we're fishing in um, the Sassoon Bay, it's gonna be code 18. So what you're gonna do is write the date, the month, code 18, and the length of the fish. And also on the top of the report card, it's the sturgeon report card uh, retained. So you're gonna write the date, the month, the location, and the length. And if there's a reward disc on there, uh, you got to write that number also. That's about it. <laughs> He's going to want to go. That's He's going to go across. He's going to go under. He's coming under. All right, everybody line up right here and let's uh, lift these rods up. If he's gonna run this gonna clear uh, I don't know yet. The keeper. Like Joe stated earlier, the better fishing on those smaller tides is in that deeper water. And the opposite stands true for the shallow water on the big tides. 
Oftentimes that first hour of that title transition, you know, when it first starts going out or just before it ends, is those key bite windows. And you want to be anchored up and have your baits down and ready to go at those times. Yeah, it was locked down. <laughs> Locating the sturgeon can be as easy as searching out holes or following the ledges until you run across them and you start graphing them. You know, when you're graphing the bottom, try to go about four or five miles an hour, and that's going to give you a good look at the bottom and give you those good clean readouts so you can mark those fish. You definitely don't want to drop down until you're graphing clear marks and you can tell that you're on top of those sturgeon. You have to remember that classic fishing term that hook sets are free. Oftentimes sturgeon is not going to offer you up a good look at a clear big old strike. So if you see any subtlety in the line that you might think is a fish, pick up that rod and swing it home and burn into them because you're not going to get many chances throughout the day. So make sure you capitalize on the ones you do get. The best times to target these fish in the Sassoon Bay or the Delta Ways for that matter, or any of the bays around here in Northern California, is in the fall. The reason for this is it starts raining and we get a lot of fresh water running into bay which forces out a lot of those bait stealing fish. It's not that the sturgeon come in more at that time, it's what happens is your bait can be presented a lot easier to those sturgeon without having those smaller fish trying to pick it off. Um, contrary to the belief, you know, the sturgeon like to live their life in brackish water. So you can catch them year round, it's just some areas are a lot better than others. You want to make sure you're in those brackish areas if you do want to find them outside of the fall. But you know, in the fall, all the way through the rainy season, you're going to find them in the Sassoon Bay area, all the way up through the Sacramento River. Hey, we get an oversized fish here. Uh, let's see. He's a keeper, but good. Great hook set. You want us to help reel? That's why you got here. <laughs> There's no point in reeling yeah, yet. We got him in two other lines here. You want us to help reel? Let me bring that pump off. <laughs> uh oh, this one's in the ship. So one of you guys helping me? It's getting kind of yeah, light. I need to come over or something. No, you're not. No, you're not. Yep. That goes down again. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, this one's over. This one over that okay. way. Beating on your forearms yet, Dad? Those two are free now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. Oh. Uh-oh. What's that? Why is this one? Another fish. Okay, bro. Walk backwards. I got the tension off of it. Beating it up. How's that feel there, buddy? <laughs> Looks like a good fish. Okay, keep it. Uh, definitely another nice keeper sturgeon. Unless I've got a hundred pound striper on. That one, baby. <laughs> So Pops, uh, how you liking the trip so far? I'm loving it. Make sure you're using that thumbnail. Good day of fishing. Look at that Phoenix rod bow. Yes sir, another Phoenix rod. Whoa. <laughs> it's a good fish here. Did you tighten up that drag on it? Yeah, I'm gonna wait for the stuff to run out. Look at that rod, that drag's tight, man. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty tight, that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, you're hardly putting yeah, any lower on my rod. fight belt for this one, huh? That's, that, that's the age talking right there. You got the fight belt, it's right below your shoulder. Well, I'm glad I have belt. that girth on the bottom there. <laughs> your fight belt right between the shoulder and the elbow. Well, maybe. Okay, if he goes too much. Devil, get it fish off. Real, real, real. Got double, got double, double hookup! Double, 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 double hookup! Double hookup! Double hookup! Double hookup! That's how we do it, baby! Double hookup! Grab that rod, Joey. Go ahead, bitch. Go. Double hookups. You guys get close. My eyes, and I thought he bumped it. Let me see that. You have a lot of water. Around me. Yeah. that level. <laughs> Okay, what I'm gonna want you to do, bud, is walk towards that way once he gets up here. We got a shaker on the other side, guys. Double hookup right now. 
Hey, Joey, Joey, on the, on that one right there. Fish, get it, fish, get it. fish. Here, yeah. Fish, fish. Okay, walk. Walk to the door. Oh, shit. You got it in there? No. No, walk to the door. Oh, you wrapped on. No, just, so. keep, just keep walking. Okay, real down. Okay, okay. A little shaker. Hey, Bob, Bob, I need, I need your assistance right now. Uh, walk, walk backwards, straight back, buddy. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got a nice little shake right here, guys. Double hook up. Double hook up. This is how we do it, folks. Uh, another nice keeper. Another keeper right there. That's uh, what I'm talking about. Right on, brother. Legal yeah. limit sport fishing. We're out with the informative fishermen. This is how we do it. Captain right here, John, brother. Captain Joe. Yeah. Right on. So we got here again, guys. You know, the Kaylee hook from Trocar, Salmon Row, and Ghost Shrimp. You gotta use these small hooks, these small hooks, guys. Four rot. These fish come off real easy. They love this small hook. They just blow it up. Well, yeah. What a fish, huh? Nice. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Get on it, man. No, he's got it. Dude, if that's a fish, it's about this big. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Yo, fish. That's funny. What? Shoot, dude. This little guy got some freaking muscle on him. That's funny as heck, dude. You just towed him for us. Yeah, see? <laughs> handle him, Joey. Handle him. Grab the weight. What's that noise? What's he saying? Drain the sink. Oh, 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 what? There's one. There There's another is. one. Yeah. Nope. Oh, 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 oh. Are you sure? Are you no, sure? he's not there. Uh, like he still loading Are you way. sure? <laughs> Twenty feet. <laughs> no kidding. With that size fish, yeah. Okay. Well, this little sturgeon has a lot sharper scoots right here. Bring him up a little bit. A lot sharper because he hasn't been in the water for a long time. He's just a baby, so his scoots are very sharp. Sharp. You just really want to handle them like that. Put your hands in the dorsal fins and have your hand back here so you're very secure. And this one, fortunately, has two two uh, birthmarks. Well, he's screaming at me. He thinks he wants to go back in. All right. That's another good. <laughs> Wait a second. Good. Go under. 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 Four over. Yeah, there it is. Little guy? I don't know. Don't know yet. Nah, he's little. Can I read my mono? Oh my god. Yeah, you could. Bait's still good and everything. Bring it over. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's the one with the double. That's the other side. How's that outside? The right floor was that you? So Joe, why don't you break down a little bit of the terminal tackle, the rods and reels that we're using to better educate them on exactly what we're using and why. Okay, here we go. Well, earlier we went over the rod. What we're, what we're using is the Phoenix 808 Abyss. We're using uh, an Avit, an SX Avit, with 65 pound test uh, braid. And all we do here is we like to use these sliders hooked to a straight swivel, uh, snap swivel. And uh, they slide pretty good. You know, we put the beads in there just to con uh, cushion the knot a little bit and so it doesn't tangle up. But most sturgeon fishermen use a um, pyramid style sinker but we like to use these torpedoes and for for one reason is uh, when these torpedo levels I mean uh, torpedo weights when they're out there they're uh, they're laying like this and so when you set the hook it comes right out of the mud no problem but if you got one of those pyramids with the flat, with the flat back and you set you know it'll come out but you're still pushing up against mud almost like anchoring it up so it's kind of resisting against your hook yeah, set exactly. in a sense. And with the sturgeon having extremely hard mouth, this is really gonna get you a better hook set overall as well. Correct. And so what we usually do is if you can't hold with a 12 ounce weight, you shouldn't be fishing the area. Okay. Um, in the past we've fished with a uh, lighter line. Mm -hmm. um, you could actually fish with, with 50 pound braid. Mm -hmm. 50 pound braid fishes a lot better than 65. Oh yeah, thinner diameter. Thinner overall. diameter, you know, less, less, bow we less weight, less bow. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we prefer this, taking people out, you know, and- Big not powerful fish that you don't want to lose. Powerful fish, you know, we just don't want to lose them. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it, a lot of people, 
you know, we'll use a swivel instead of this uh, slider. But we found that what that does is the line gets tangled here in the barrel part, and you're, you've got a tendency of breaking off or mm -hmm. losing some quality fish that you don't want to lose. If you're not on the West Coast, it's just called a sliding swivel. On the West, we call them sliders for some reason. I know back across the other side of the country, they call them sliding swivels. So that's some of the rigging we're using. Now let's talk about the 65 pound braid. The benefit of using braid here versus other lines. <clears throat> well, for me, mm -hmm. uh, the benefit of using braid is uh, you got less stretch mm -hmm. and um, it, you know. Virtually it's, zero. Yeah, virtually zero stretch. But with the mono, um, it's gonna take more weight to get to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so if I had, you know, this is 65 pound. If I had on say 30, this 12 is not going to do nothing. It's going to let out a lot of line. I'm probably going to use half of my spool uh -huh. and the weight's still not going to be stuck on the bottom. And in order to catch sturgeon, you're going to have to, you know, be on the bottom. Yeah, There's with going to mono, be a lot. Yeah, yeah, with mono, you're going to have a lot of bow in it. Uh, you're going to set, if you try to set the hook on it, um, you're going to have to, you know, set the hook yeah. really, really hard I and know, real. Another, another thing that the guys don't realize with braid, and a lot of old timers still tell me this, oh, that's just overkill. This is 15 pound diameter. 65 yeah. pound braid is 15 pound diameter. If you put 15 pound mono, it's underkill out yeah. here. So you're getting a thicker diameter with mono. You have more water resistance, you have stretch. Braid is the deal to go, but you need to pick up line fast and stay on these fish, especially with the barbless deal. Yeah, very true. You got a, a lot of tension, you know? And another thing that I like to bring up is a reel selection. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody goes to a bigger reel. There's really no need to have a big reel. We got about 240 yards of line on here, uh -huh. and we've fished a lot of fish. You oh, know? Yeah. We've done a lot. There's no need to have four or 500 yards of <laughs> braid on here, which I see some guys coming out here with the big old thing. Uh -huh. You know, use some lighter tackle. Oh yeah. You know, don't be afraid. If if you can't fight the, you know, if you can't get the fish to the boat, you know, right. you're not using your drag and you're not using your. I mean, rod. look at the size of those fish we were hammering earlier. Yeah, we're, this we're is on this them. setup right here. That was probably no longer than a 20 minute fight. Yeah. It's very doable. It's a better fight. It's quality gear. It's the right gear for detecting more bites and for landing more fish. Yeah. Okay. And uh, one more thing, mm -hmm. when we got this rod uh, set inside the holder, a lot of people think that, you know, you're gonna set it in there and turn your clicker on and wait for the click 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 what we do is we have this drag locked down almost a hundred percent so when this rod is inside the water you can't pull this out you know there's no way and i'm, and I'm actually pulling this hard this is how hard our drags lock down so when you do get that hit and you do hook set, you're just driving that hook straight in there. You don't have to worry about flipping your bail. You don't have to worry about putting a bunch of tension on here with your thumb. You just, you know, mm -hmm. pile drive that. You drive set it, it in, in there, you know, drive it in. Yeah, strong line, strong hook. Yeah, yeah. But you know, that's basically it, man. This is how we do it. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, when you slept the whole time, but. <laughs> <laughs> River C's here to flip hamburgers. All right. <laughs> So we decided to hang out later into the night since we were having Under so there. much fun and we ended up hooking this green sturgeon. So following the regulations, we had to release this fish outside of the boat. So sorry for not getting a better shot for you here, guys. But, you know, releasing that fish and focusing on the fish's safety took precedence. We ended up catching a few more short fish before we decided to head back to the docks where Joe butchered out this fish for us. I ended up trying that broke man's lobster recipe Perfect, the next man. day and oh man, let me tell you, that is good. So get out there guys, get on some fish. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you watching. Best of fish.